Now we take you with us as we disassemble a high mileage motor and show you guys what we find or what we don't find and of course this we can discuss what the owner did or did not do or lack thereof taking care of the engine and possibly bust the myth locally when they say may alog na piston mo maybe we'll bust that once and for all because it's probably having a lot of people get scammed into rebuilding the engine so you know this portion is going to be cladded with good information for you and your friends we'll even talk about piston rings and its capabilities of sealing so you know this something that you don't want to miss <laughs> Okay, here we are actually with a VTI engine. This is actually 97,000 kilometers mileage. And I'm, I'm sure and I know in the US, that's not a lot because they got a bunch of freeways traveling from state to state is quite easy. But here in our country, that's quite high because it's really, really traffic here. So getting enough miles is going to be hard or it's, it's a lot. Like you must be extensively using the car to get that kind of mileage so come on let's pull the head we already removed the head stud so it's all ready to lift the head let's go a little walk around the block or the engine for a moment here you can see the dust is actually quite thick because you know it, it gets a bit oily and then most of the time the fan of the condenser and the radiator just blows including dust so it got thick we're gonna be cleaning the block when we do the series of the vdi so don't worry about that and you can see here yep it's bone stock stock ports right yeah this is actually the engine of the VTI series that we're doing that will be all in the description below the episode one as the start to watch the all the episodes because it's actually still ongoing now here we got all the head studs removed so we're just gonna lift the block I mean the head from the block for you guys all right wait let me just set up the phone here at the position all right yeah all right, start lifting the head now. Wait. And, oops. Step on, oh man, step on the tools. And, you know, we got to cuss out the whole history of mankind when you step on tools and it hurts. All right, there, there. And here, let, wait, let me show you the head gasket is on the head. Yeah. All right. See, this is proof. According, you know, this is proof that I do things hands on, unlike what some locals would claim. This is proof, right? All right. Okay, now let's go look at closer to see how the engine or the bores are. All right, let's turn the pistons. Wait, there. Yeah. All right, let me wipe this to show you the piston code i keep forgetting the local vdi because you know i know everything about the esi the d16 a6 and of course pm7 and p29 the aftermarkets you know okay let's check it all right wait, let me move my phone closer let's go okay let's go close now yeah p2m stock vti pistons now would you look at that you can still see the cross hatch. This is a 97,000 kilometer engine. That's props to Honda. That's crazy. Wait, let me get a tissue. To wipe the oil from the board to show you guys. This is when you check an engine and if, if you still see a cross hatch visible, you're in luck because the condition of the boards are actually still excellent. 
you know, you don't have to wonder if it's oval or whatnot. If there's a cross hatch, then definitely that's still round because without the cross hatch or when it's all shiny up without the cross hatch, that's when you know the, the wear has been extensive. But this one, this is as good as it is, you know, after some measurements and all that. New piston rings, this is actually as good as new. Well, not new, but you know, as good as it can be. Now, let me delve into something local. That's a myth that's been spurring around. People or mechanics would say, Boss, may I log yung piston? Meaning, the pistons rock at top dead. When you think about it, there's a thing called piston to wall clearance. Of course it's gonna move. So, they're just scamming people. That suddenly you have to pull the engine, rebuild it and whatnot, and actually run even oversized piston rings. Oh, we'll get to that later. Before now, let me show you this. And remember, this is a 97,000 kilometer mileage motor. There. May a log. But it makes power and doesn't smoke. So what is this bull crap that they're talking about? Just to rebuild the engine for labor? Might as well just ask for their money because that's scamming people, you know. Because without measurement, you wouldn't know this. It's a wave. Yeah. It's annoying. Sorry. So I got a Wusa. So, okay, let's continue disassembling the motor. All right, now here we lightly label the pistons from its carbon print or from its carbon buildup. So this way we don't get confused once we remove the pistons before labeling them, you know. We just put them on the shelf so it doesn't get mixed up. Now it's my colleague's turn to disassemble the oil pan and the bottom end. All right, yeah, all right. At least it's going to be fast because it's time lapse. There you go. And okay, while my colleague continues to work on this, let me talk about the piston rings. As we talked about it earlier, that they try to tell you guys, may a log or the piston rocks and then run oversized rings. Look at this. Now imagine the gray area or the gray hole is the bore of the pistons, okay? And the black line is the piston ring. They make the piston ring concentric to our bore and then expand it a bit. This way when you install it, it pushes out equally all around the bore because it's concentric like this. The rings pushes out all around the bore equally on the same or equal pressure. This way, it seals really good. This is why checking the bore if it's straight and it's good, just honing it will do a lot good in just a new set of piston rings. And then here we go with whether you put an oversized ring, simply because they will claim or tell you na may alog yung piston, you know, with the piston rocks at top dead. And we just showed you earlier that even a perfectly good running condition engine that makes power does that. So what's wrong with that? That's like scamming, making you guys pay for that, right? And here it is, I drew it. The green line or the green ring is actually the oversized ring that's filed to fit a smaller bore. And when you compress it and install it, it's gonna go in, right? But look at this. Remember, we're talking about concentric bore. The piston rings being concentric to the bore so that it presses out equally, right? With this kind of crap, look at this. Because the ring is no longer concentric to the bore because you squeezed it in, that's the pressure that receives on the block and for it to seal. Not concentric to the whole bore. It's not like 360 around the bore. So how can you expect that to seal properly? This is why you see some do this and it's unequal, right? Like some get 240 PSI on cylinder one, two, and three, and suddenly number four is like dead. And the stupid thing here is that the builder does not know why. I mean, okay, that means you don't know anything. And even if they say the ring gaps were too wide, do you remember this video that you can click here, but it'll be on the description below. This B20 had a more worn out B20 block, but the bore remained straight. So when we checked the ring gap, it was like 0 0.0020. That was too wide, but it was concentric. So we still run it. And guess what? It has over 300 PSI on all four and it's been running since 2018. So what's up, right? So before people start to follow what their friend's uncle said, you got to remember, maybe your friend's uncle didn't even build it and just heard it. So, hey, 
that's not a second hand information that is third hand or fourth hand information and if it's that far that is good as false or fiction that's not true because you can't even trace it back I say this because after they do that, they turn the block into junk and we're running out of engines getting more pricey, so stop turning good things into junk. All right, now too much piston ring stock. Let's head back to the block and we'll have my colleague remove the pistons one by one and so that we can check how the status is of the crank and the bearings. Remember, this is a 97,000 mileage motor, so it'll be interesting, right? And of course, we're going to run time lapse on the video so that it doesn't get too boring. And so that, you know, my colleague would look like is a fast worker as fast as me. Well, because the time lapse speed on my phone is the same anyways. Oh, and pardon the droning noise as my colleague was early removing the oil pan. That's because it was raining hard here, you know, tropical country. You see, it's actually really clean, right? Not bad. It's a well-maintained engine despite the miles. All right, now let's go with the time lapse. Okay, now here we're removing the main cap. Well, sorry, no. Piston number one. Then number two. That's the trick here with the D series. It's not as easy as a B series where the main caps are, you know, quite open. So it's really to remove the pistons. Here you have to keep turning by the quarter the crank but hey we get used to it right sorry about the out of focus apparently when untorquing the mains the power handle got close to the phone and it lost its focus right there okay the oil pump is removed now we remove the well i'm not sure if it's called the rear cap but where the real rear main seal is this way we can remove the crank right yep it's almost off all right now let me show you something here i mean we're not gonna it's not needed right now because when this before we disassemble this engine is running really good but we're gonna show you a little trick that you can do just to see if the crank is bent or when you have a crank and you want to check it when it's bent get another spare block and rig it up like this look rig up the magnetic stand and the dial gauge onto the journal in this case journal number five okay you gotta actually secure the magnetic stand really well wait it's still moving oh crap all right wait wait oh that's okay there wait all right there it's secure we zero it out because if the crank is bent when you turn the crank it's gonna start, you know, moving the dial gauge. You can see if it's bent or not, right? Okay, there, now let's turn it. Let's see. Obviously this crank was straight because, you know, it ran really good before we disassembled it. So, hey, look at that. True straight or straight and true, whichever English you want to prefer, right? Yeah, look, you can check the rest of the mains, like four, three, two, one, the same way. So, hey, at least now we got to show you that. And here are photos of the rig. You can see it. And it's actually, you know, it's quite fun to do this, you know, just to see if it's straight. But, you know, obviously this is really good of a crank. The en engine's condition is pretty decent. All right. Now let's remove the crank. All right. Oh, the thrust washer fell. All right. We get that. Don't drop the crank, big homie. All right, it's kidding. All right, now you can see the engine is actually in pretty good condition. Let's move closer, but hey, you know, we gotta give this a thumbs up, yeah. All right, okay, we go closer now. Look at that. This looks like it doesn't even have enough miles, but it has 97,000 kilometers. That's crazy. This is a crazy good condition engine. And never mind the brown color. That's the oil, of course. This exactly shows you that it's a well-maintained engine. So when we open up other engines, we can see it's all dark and whatnot. It wasn't taken care of. That's for sure, right? Let me turn the block and let me show you the bore. Let's go look at that and remember 
this pistons when it was on top there they was rocking in the in locally it's like make a log right but look look at the cross hatch that is 22 years old 97,000 mileage motor and it's still fresh so why are you needing oversized pistons right okay now let me show you the head on the valves and all the good things that you need to know now look at those crusty valves the exhaust valves which is on top look i say crusty because it's white and that means it's like burnt as hell and so when you think about it this has never been raised and whatnot so imagine those who enjoys setting off the rev limiter for pops and bangs and all the bull crap and then our launch control you're gonna drop a valve anytime soon because look this needs replacing and we're gonna do that for this even though this doesn't race and you can click here for episode one of that series or that video and this engine was of that car and we actually dyno run it or dynoed it for the episode one of the series and you know you're gonna enjoy the rest of the episodes that's coming through and of course when we get done with episode two that will be on the end screen and you can click it right there but for now it'll be this and of course it'll be on the description below episode one so you guys can start it from the beginning and that is because in case you guys are wondering what we're gonna do with this engine that we're disassembling the series will talk about building it and dynoing it once again so for sure that's something that you're gonna binge watch and enjoy so hey we got you subscribe if you haven't and like the video it helps promote it further